Thank you, Governor, for joining us as we celebrate our graduates' achievement. I now present to you the Honorable Governor Sam Brownback, Kansas 46th Governor. Thanks. Thank you, Sam. Happy to be here. My pleasure. <clears throat> Thanks. Great to join you tonight. <clears throat> graduates, congratulations on a major milestone that you're uh, moving through. This is fantastic. I have, I have a couple pieces of advice. One I want to give you that I think you just absolutely have to remember. I think you, just, I think you have to remember this piece of advice. I, and it, this is solid advice. It, this is critically important. You will use it throughout your life. Always, always, always listen to your mother. Okay? I mean, if you're going to forget everything else, let's, am I right, crowd? Is this? As they say in my house, if mother ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And if dad ain't happy, nobody cares. <laughs> kind of the way it, no, I, I have violated this rule in the past to my detriment. Last weekend was Mother's Day weekend. I think this is a fabulous, I, I violated this rule in the past when I was your age and in college, I had about a four inch afro. Uh, when I was going to, to K-State. I thought it was really cool. Uh, I thought it was impressive. Uh, I have seen pictures of that afro for years since as I've run for political office, never in a favorable light. My mother hated that ha hairdo. She thought that was really bad and I shouldn't have done it. If I'd listened to my mother, I wouldn't have been in trouble with that and I wouldn't have seen this picture for years afterwards. It even had its own website had this own website that I'm Fro Brownback uh, website. So it's, I think it's down now. I hope it is now. So anyway, just always listen to your mother. This was also driven home to me uh, by a minister at my church at Mother's Day a couple years ago. He was telling a story about how moms will do everything, will do anything for you. They'll just really help you out. When he was going to college, he had a summer job pouring concrete, and you pour concrete early in the morning. So he'd get up and have to be at the job site at 6 a.m. His mother would get up at 5 a.m. and cook him a hot breakfast. She would fix him a sa two sandwiches. She would freeze his uh, he would freeze her candy bar to send with him. She would send carrots that had been finely cut, and then three napkins for him to eat his sack lunch. One napkin to wipe his hands beforehand, one to use during lunch, and one to clean his hands to pour more concrete. The other guys made fun of him because his mother took such good care of him and thought, oh, Pete, what did your mother fix for you today? What happened here? And then his mother had to go take care of his sister for a while, or his aunt for a while, and so his sister was then packing his lunch for Pete. Well, his sister didn't get up at five in the morning to cook a hot breakfast, so you can figure your own cereal out. And for lunch, she packed a sandwich the night before, threw a carrot in that hadn't been cut or anything, and just poured some lemonade. So he shows up at lunch, and instead of having all this nice sandwich, everything neat, sliced carrots, he's got a carrot that hadn't been cut, his candy bar's melted, his sandwich has got a thumbprint and it's stale. And the guys look at him and they said, so Pete, when did you get married? <laughs> I thought it was uh, interesting. Always listen to your mother. She's good. I have a couple quick thoughts. Tonight's about you. You guys, are, this is a major milestone. Some of you have come through the, uh, the penal institutions and are here graduating, which is a phenomenal accomplishment that you've, you've come through such difficulties to be here. This is a, this is a fabulous accomplishment of where you are. And the, the brief thought that I would give you would be this. It's why you should follow your dreams. Everybody's going to tell you, follow your dreams, follow your dreams, follow your dreams. You're going, yeah, yeah, I got that. We should do that. But I, the bigger question to me is why? Why should I follow my dreams? Because it always seems like to me, if I'm following my dreams, that's kind of a selfish thing. This is about me, then. It's not about somebody else or something else. But the reason you follow your dreams, the why of why you follow your dreams, is a good dream is done for somebody else. A good dream that you have is so that somebody else benefits by your good dream. That if you become a teacher, that somebody else gets taught. And if you don't become a teacher, this person doesn't get taught by the quality you could give them. That you, you become a doctor and somebody else gets healed. And if you don't become a doctor, somebody else doesn't get healed. 
or do you become a lawyer or a farmer or a minister that, that you're doing this so that somebody else benefits? The nature, the why of a good dream is so that somebody else benefits. That's why you do your dream. And I hope you follow that dream. I hope you listen to it. I hope you pursue it and you don't let people talk you out of it saying, you know, it's just too hard. I think you just hang in there because it's for somebody else. It's a great little book on this, The Dream Giver by Wilkerson that I'd highly recommend. Second is, develop your mind and your heart. Do both. Develop both your mind and your heart, your head and your heart, or your mind and your soul if you want to look at it that way. And they're, they're different things. You develop the mind by study. You develop the mind by going to class and reading and listening to people. You develop the heart as a relational thing. You develop your soul relationally. So go and study and continue to study and do it all your life. But then when you say, well, how do I develop my heart or my character? It's relational. And I would urge you to find a couple of mentors that you look at and look for a mentor that is somebody that's lived life the way you hope to live life. And then go to them and ask him, how'd you do it? And let them mentor you because they're ahead of you in the process. And just go to them and just say, I think you've really lived life pretty well. How did you do it? One of mine was Roy Cook. He's a guy that's since passed away a couple years ago. I remember I was thinking about running again uh, for the Senate when I'd given a term limits pledge. I'd only served two terms. And I went to Roy and I said, Roy, I, I'm thinking about, I, I think maybe I'd want to do this. And he looked at me and in one second said, don't do it. When a man breaks his word, it breaks the man. When a man breaks his word, it breaks the man. Don't do it. And I just want to say, well, let's talk about this a little bit. But it was a mentor who I trusted, who had lived life well, and I thought he knows in his heart the right answer and follow it. And finally, be present in the present. Be present right now. Too much of life in the Western world in particular is spent worrying about the future or living in the past. That you think about this great time you had, or you're worried about what's going to happen to your child here, or what's going to happen at your job, or you're worried about this, or you're worried about that. And yet, most of the things I've worried about never happen. Or most of the things I've planned and worried about, it hasn't happened the way I had planned. And to be fully present in the present. A friend of mine, Ken Zwig, passed away about uh, six months ago. He had cancer the last 18 months. And I'd go and see and talk with him. And he was really big on this point about being fully present, doing whatever you're doing, doing it now. Even if you're walking the dog, be present in the present because that's the only, that's the only moment you have. And if you're worried about the future, you're living in the past, you get distracted from what you ought to really be paying attention to right now. And this is the only moment. And this is the moment that you intersect you intersect with eternity with God and you don't get it again and you won't get it in the future. So you just, you're, you're here while you're here and you're present in the present. And life becomes a lot better because you're not concerned about what's going on in the future or in the past. So follow your dreams because it's for somebody else. Develop your head, your mind, and your heart. And do that relationally with mentors. And be fully present doing what you're doing now. Not focus in the past or in the future. Those are distractions. It's the now. And I look forward to seeing great, great things come out of your lives. All my best. God bless you all.